how about text to video? And there are also uh, several works on text to video models nowadays, and many um, tech companies and other researchers are focusing on this text to video. And one approach to make this text to video model is to train with massive 2D video data set. But it's um, affordable for many of us because we don't have that much um, uh, resource or computational power. So um, one line of work are doing, uh, one other um, researchers are doing is to extend this powerful text to image model to text to video model. So, uh, so they're just using this knowledge from the text to image model to extend it to the text to video model. So I am going to talk about these two works about uh, extending text to image to text to video. And secondly, how about um, personalized text to video model? So as I said uh, in the last slide, there was Dreambooth, which was personalized text to image model. And how about um, personalized text to video? And it will be challenging to uh, collect a number of personalized video and train the model with them. So uh, one other um, research group are doing is, is doing is that um, they learn this motion modeling module explicitly and insert it to any kind of um, personalized text to image model and animate those images. So I will talk about this one also. So since I am gonna talk about like these three um, uh, independent works, I'm not going into too deep, uh, deep details. So I'll just go through just highlight ideas. So let's start with this, um, some preliminaries about uh, uh, denoise and diffusion probabilistic model. And this slide is from Konus last seminar. And the objective of this uh, denoising diffusion probability model is to maximize this log likelihood uh, of this original um, RGB image X0. And since directly optimizing this uh, log likely likelihood term is uh, challenging, we are uh, maximizing this elbow term instead. And this elbow term is directly uh, defined as loss function here. So, uh, so DDPM works like this, starting with this um, original uh, RGB image, clean image X0, we uh, add noise one uh, step by step in the forward process until it gets to this um, uh, random uh, Gaussian noise. And then in the reverse process, the model learns to denoise the uh, noise in each step of the images. So the model, uh, when training, the model takes any kind of um, noisy image in the in random step, and they learn to uh, predict the noise, the amount of noise there exists in this um, random uh, noisy images. So here, the model takes this uh, noisy image at uh, time step t, and it predicts the noise. And thus, loss function is defined like this. And uh, DDIM, which is um, denoising diffusion in place in model, is proposed to speed up the inference speed with non-Markovian process. And since this DDPM was uh, designed with this um, Markovian process where uh, each step was um, dependent on the previous uh, step, uh, DDIM uh, designed this forward process in non-Markovian way so that they can uh, speed up the inference speed when uh, sampling uh, to a uh, RGB image. So just um, the CDIM made this um, sampling process much faster than DDPM. And finally, another work is this conditional diffusion model, which, object, which the objective is to maximize this conditional likelihood. So the, basically the loss function is same as uh, DDPM, but one difference is that it takes this C, which is a condition and uh, uh, predict the noise conditional on this noisy image and also this um, condition C. And in text to image, text to image models, this C will be text and any kind of um, condition can be used such as like semantic map or other um, images. And one famous uh, model for conditional diffusion, uh, one famous conditional diffusion model is, is this um, stable diffusion model. And one more difference is that they, they designed this model with encoder decoder architecture where they uh, encode this original RGB image into a latent feature map Z0 uh, and they do this diffusion process in the latent space. So basically DDPM did this 
did this um, uh, uh, diffusion process in the RGB space and the difference uh, in this stable diffusion is they do this di uh, diffusion process in the latent space. So after doing this diffusion process, they can decode this some um, latent value to a RGB image using this decoder um, network. So uh, let's start with this text to video zero, which was presented at this um, ICCV23. So uh, the motiv motivation of this work is, as I said, um, training with massive 2D video data set is unaffordable for many of us because we don't have that much computational power. So in this work, they modify a pre-trained text to image model to text to video model. And in this case, they don't need any uh, training. They're just modifying uh, uh, the layers or some self attentions to make them make the text to image model to be a text to video model. So one naive approach uh, can be just independently sampling the uh, n number of frames of noises. So for example, uh, we can sample, uh, if we want m number of frames, which consists, uh, which will be a, uh, if we want to make a, a video with m number of frames, we can sample m number of uh, noisy images first here. And then we can do this DDIM backward process and generate m number of um, real images, right? So by doing this, uh, the model can generate semantically similar images here. So maybe the text was uh, horse running in the, the suite or horse running. And you can see the semantics are quite similar, but there's no consistent motion dynamics or there's no consistent foreground objects. So in this work, what they do is, they, uh, is that they introduce this motion dynamics in the latent codes to induce this motion uh, consistent motion dynamics. And also they propose cross-frame attention to preserve the identity of the foreground and background uh, scenes. So there's like these two big contribution of this work. Um, sorry, but what is the motion dynamics? Mm -hmm. uh, motion dynamics. Um, it means that, you know, like, just image has no motions, right? And I think here like motion dynamic just stands for just motion itself, whether the motion itself is uh, smooth or whether this motion is um, uh, yeah. <laughs> motion is just like the motion is just 그냥 그 모션 자체를 그냥 모션 다이나믹스라고 얘기하는 것 같습니다. 저거 애초에 그 이미지 자체가 한 비디오에서 샘플링 한게 아니라서 퍼시스턴트 퍼시스턴트한 모션 다이나믹스 없다고 하는 거죠? 그렇죠. 이거 한국말로 다시 설명하면은 지금 세팅은 비디오를 만들 건데 이제 가장 그냥 쉬운 방법은 우리가 M 개 프레임을 갖는 비디오를 만들고 싶으면은 일단 M 개를 샘플링해서 이렇게 이어 붙일 수도 있잖아요. 그렇게 했을 때는 모션 컨시턴시도 없고 그리고 애초에 이 똑같은 말을 만들어내긴 하는데 얘네들 다 다르게 생겨가지고 이 오브젝트 컨시턴시도 없고 그렇다는 뜻입니다. 그 나이반 어프로치는 그래서 이제 이걸 해결하고자 뭐두 가지 방법론들을 추가했다. 그리고 이게 트레이닝 프리예요. 그러니까 학습은 하나도 없이 그냥 네트워크 내에서 조금 조금씩 그 샘플링하는 방법이라든지 혹은 네트워크 구조상에 그냥 어텐션하는 방법이라든지 이런 것만 바꾼 거예요. 학습은 하나도 하지 않고. So here's the architecture. And first one is well, inducing motion dynamics in latent codes. So before starting, the requirement is uh, there's like given delta t. Uh, these are all hyperparameters. And delta t is number of um, diffusion steps. And m is number of frames here. And lambda is also hyperparameter, which is bigger than, uh, larger than zero. And here, delta is defined with delta x and delta y, and it stands for the uh, direction of the translation. So whether how, how uh, which direction and how much this certain uh, object will move, and it stands for it just stands for this um, translation direction. So with given these um, 
parameters. We first, uh, they first start with um, sampling random noise uh, from this um, Gaussian distribution for just uh, the first frame. So they're not sampling uh, the M number of frames. They're just sampling for just the first frame. So they sample this first frame. And then they do this DDIM backward process, which is um, denoising process until T prime. So large T here was uh, the uh, sample from Gaussian noise. And then we do the denoising process until T prime. And T prime is T minus delta T here. So we denoised to a certain amount. And then we are going inside this for loop, which start from uh, second frame to M frame. So in this for loop, we compute this um, uh, global translation vector, which is defined with um, multiplying lambda times k minus one times this delta. Delta was this translation direction. And by this computation, we can get each um, global translation for each frame. And then we define this warping function with this delta k, and it's named wk. And then we um, apply this warping function to the uh, noisy first frame here and warp this image to x tilde k. So starting with this same uh, noisy first frame, we are defining warping function for each frame and apply this warping function to this first frame to make uh, a noisy frame per each uh, frame. And then after um, making this uh, x tilde, they do this DDPM forward, forward process, which is making this um, image noisy again until it gets to large T here, which is um, Gaussian noise. And after iterating with uh, second to M frame, we can get uh, M number of uh, noisy frames. So we are not independently sampling uh, M number of frames, but we are starting from this uh, uh, first noisy frame and we are making this M number of frames conditioned on this first frame. Motion freedom. 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 움직여 준 거고 그걸 다시 이제 노이즈화를 시켰다가 그 다시 복원을 했을 때 그럴 때 이제 좀더 다이버스한 모션이 나오지 않나 싶어서 이제 프리덤을 준다고 저는 생각을 했거든요. 이거는 그냥 제 생각이어가지고 네 그렇습니다. 혹시 이 프로세스는 지금 이해가 되시나요? 저는 이제 네. 데이터 네네. 저는 이제 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 저는 되어 있는데 그러면 신 전체를 뭔가 우선은 움직여 놓는 건가요? 네, 일단 여기서는 신 전체를 움직여놔요. 그래서 아, 이제 신 그러면... 전체를 와핑 시키고 뭐빈 부분은 그냥 리플렉션해서 채워놓고 뭐 이런 식으로 하는 것 같아요. 그 노이지한 그 레이턴트 단에서. 아 그러면 뭔가 오브젝트의 움직임을 뭔가 디파인 해놓는 건 아니고 어쨌든 그냥 동영상으로서의 그런 기능을 하기 위해서 넣어주는 그런 거라고 이해하면 될까요? 네, 일단은 전체적으로 이 어떤 동일한 프레임으로부터 조금 조금씩 이거를 글로벌 트랜스레이션을 매기면서 뭐 특정한 어떤 모션이 나오기를 기대하는 것 같아요. 대신에 이제 
어떤 오브젝트가 동일하거나 이런 거에 대한 아직 컨스트레인트는 없어요. 그리고 한개 더는 저 와핑 펑션이 어떤 와핑인지가 혹시 서술이 되어 있나요? 와핑 펑션이요? 어, 뭐 정확하게 서술 안돼 있는데 그냥 코드 잠깐 봤을 때는 트랜스레이션 벡터 구하고 그걸로 그냥 플로우 구해가지고 그냥 그 그냥 그렇게 전체 어 플로우 하나 맵 그려가지고 바로 그냥 와핑 때리는 것 같았거든요. 그러니까 트랜스레이션 방향으로만 어 와핑을 매겨주는 것 같았어요. 음, 알겠습니다. 감사합니다. 음악 프로세스가 지금 레이턴 스페이스에서 하는 거예요? 네, 지금 이거 다 레이턴 스페이스에서 하고 있습니다. 그러니까 기본적으로 제가 설명을 빠뜨렸는데 제가 소개할 모든 연구들은 스테이블 디퓨전 기반이어가지고 모든 프로세스는 레이턴트 단에서 다 되고 있는 거예요. 지금. 조금 궁금한 게 레이턴트 스페이스 상에서 저런 그 와핑 같은 거 되게 스파셜 트랜슬레이션인데 <웃음> 그런 게 뭔가 픽셀 레벨처럼 경작한다는 그런 인투션을 갖고 그냥 한 건가요? 근데 뭐 그런 거 같아요. 그러니까 일단 기본적으로 그 저희가 피처 맵을 뽑아도 스페셜 단에서 그 피처 맵 단에서도 스페셜한 정보가 남아 있기 때문에 저희가 뭔가 디텍션 테스크를 할 때나 스페셜 단에서 처리한 것들이 있는 것 같은데. 일단 그런 인투이션에서 스페셜 단에서 이런 어, 좀 테크닉들을 적용을 한것 같습니다. 그 백워드랑 DDIM 백워드랑 DTPM 포워드 저 부분이 제가 네. DDIM이랑 DTPM을 제대로 잘 몰라가지고 근데 어, DDIM 백워드를 DDIM으로 하는 거는 좀더 속도를 빠르게 하기 위함이고 그러면 포워드를 할 때는 DTPM은 좀더 세분화되는 그런 단계를 좀 주기 위해서 그런 것인가요? 어, 그, 솔직히 이건 제가 저도 그쪽에 막그 확인 안 해가지고 모르겠는데 혹시 <웃음> 그 방학 때 DTPM이랑 그 디퓨전 모델 스터디한 사람들 중에 그 프로세스에 그 지금 이런 형태로 한 거에 대한 차이점을 아시는 분 계실까요? 요거는 조금 더 확인을 하고 아, 제가 다시 네. 찾아보도록 하겠습니다. 정확하게는 잘 모르지만 어, 네. DDIM이 약간 트레이드오프를 가져가서 DDPM으로 학습을 하고 DDIM으로 제너레이션을 하는 게 약간 음. 일반 DDIM이 어쨌든 인프라운스 속도를 높이기 위한 방식이니까 그런 게좀 일반적인 방식처럼 사용되는 걸로 알고 있습니다. 아 네네. 음. 아, 감사합니다. 진행도 해볼까요? 여기까지는 다 이해된 걸로 가정을 하고 그렇게 했을 때 you can see that the uh, so we uh, added this uh, we induced this motion dynamics in the latent code and you can see that the, the, there becomes like some more consistent motion dynamics across the frames here so first uh, row is the uh, naive approach and we can get some uh, more consistent motion dynamics but still the foreground objects are not consistent and also the background is not that um, consistent so what they do is they propose this cross frame attention where they modify the uh, self attention part in the in the unit architecture so basically this um a stable diffusion has unit architecture and this architecture is modified version of unit so each block has convolution layers and also there's self attention and there's cross attention to give um, some uh, knowledge about the text and so it, it's modified um, version of UNET and there's this um, self-attention in the text to image model. So here you can see that this self-attention is applied to each frame because Q uh, a query key value is defined as like this shape but they modify it to, uh, to this cross-frame attention where The first frame is you always used as key and uh, value, and only query value changes across the frames. So in this way, the appearance and the structure of the objects and background are carried from uh, carried over from the first frame to subsequent frames. So that makes like temporal consistency on objects and backgrounds. So after applying this, uh, modifying this self-attention to cross-frame attention, you can see that the 
uh, the foreground and background objects gets more consistent compared to the uh, above two rows. So here are some qualitative results. And you can see that um, even though this model didn't learn any kind of um, motions from the video, and it's just um, extended version of this text image, it generates plausible um, motions on diverse um, categories. So dancing and running and uh, riding bicycle. But I tried with my own prompts and you can see that it fails to um, generate some complex motions such as uh, river flowing and dog barking and uh, fireworks. So it was kind of like limitation of this work because like, they, didn't, they didn't train this model with the video data set. So here comes LAMP, uh, Learn a Motion Pattern for Fusion-based Video Generation, which is uh, uh, presented like one month ago in archive. 넘어가기 전에 혹시 질문이 있을까요? 앞에 연구에 대해서. 네, 그럼 일단은 바로 진행을 해볼게요. So, uh, as you have shown that uh, this text to video zero, which was the ICCB work I just explained, uh, was not trained on any video data set. So it didn't learn, uh, it doesn't have any knowledge about the motion prior, and it kind of generates similar looking frames. So in this work, LAMP, they proposed to learn the motion dynamics with very little data. So the setting is like this. They first collect a small number of um, videos with same category. So for example, in this case, horse running. So there's like uh, eight to 16 videos of horse running. And they uh, fine tune this um, pre-trained text to image model with this small amount of data. And when fine tuning, they do not train all the layers, but they freeze most of the layers or they partially freeze some layers. And they add this temporal spatial motion learning layers and only train those on this small amount of images. So here are some examples. So for example, if we train the model with uh, playing guitar videos, this model becomes expert on this motion and generate diverse videos related to this motion. So like GTA style on playing guitar and playing guitar astronaut. And here like birds flying, if you try train this model with birds flying videos, we can make this um, model as a expert on this motion, bird flying. So the method is quite simple. And they also use this first frame condition pipeline. And you can see in this objective, they are only training to uh, predict the noise from the second to the Lth frame, the last frame. So basically uh, they, uh, they can make the, uh, when training, they can make the original image to the latent space. And they fix this uh, first frames latent and they only add noise to the second to the last frame. And they train to predict uh, the noise uh, from second to the last frame. So in this way, they let the model focus on learning the motion itself, not the content, because the content is provided with this first frame. So all the like color, shape, and all the content information is provided with the uh, first uh, image. And then this model learns to denoise from the second to the last to only focus on the motion itself. So the second thing they did is, is to modify this attention layer, same as the ICCB work I just shared, because they are uh, using this first frame as key and value across the um, uh, all the um, attention layers. So only query value changes and key and value is fixed with are fixed with um, the first frame. And finally, I said that they're not uh, fine tuning all the layers, but they're just adding some uh, additional layer and train uh, the additional layers and train on them. So the layer they propose is this temporal spatial uh, motion learning layer. And this layer is built on top of this pre-trained 2D convolution layer with two branches, 1D convolution and 2D convolution. And only these two are trainable parts. And before feeding to each layer, 
they modify the shape of the feature map into two different chips. So here, before moving, uh, feeding into this 1D convolution, they reshape it into batch times height times width times channel times frame. And here they merge this batch and uh, uh, frames, the number of frames into a batch here. So I kind of like visualized this some um, simple example. So before going in, um, feeding into this 2D convolution layer, they reshape it like this. So we can visualize uh, with this simple graphics here. So 2D convolution is just as what we think, just 2D convolution, which works on this spatial coordinate for each frame. So 2D convolution layer will be applied to each frame. So there's like no uh, temporal dependencies. They're just working on this, uh, uh, working on each frame, each, uh, each feature map of the each frame. So they are um, learning the space, they're learning about the spatial motions. And before feeding into the 1D convolution, they reshape it like this. And you can we can visualize it like in this way. So in this way, uh, the 1D convolution is applied through the frames so that they can learn about the temporal motions here. So 2D convolution was applied to this spatial coordinate, while 1D convolution is applied to this temporal coordinate. So this design aims to enable efficient uh, information exchanges across the frames and also across the spatial um, information. Intuition的话，我们讲，operation，它是，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，它，
just um, extending the text to image model to text to video model. But one difference is that this model is the, the text to the ICTB work is a general text to video model while LAMP is just expert on single uh, motion category. Background T2V보다 훨씬 더 백그라운드 유지를 좀더 잘하는 의미도 좀 있을 것 같아요. 네, 그제 그 생각에는 일단은 그 텍스트 지로 같은 경우는 학습 자체가 없이 했던 거여가지고 물론 그 백그라운드나 홀그라운드의 컨스턴트를 위해서 여러 가지 메소드들이 추가됨에도 이제 뭐 조금 조금씩 바뀌는 것 같긴 한데 근데 이제 램프 같은 경우는 애초에 퍼스트 프레임 그냥 박아놓고 그 다음에 이제 뒤에 프레임들만 생성하도록 지금 뭐 학습이 돼 있긴 해서 일단 학습 기반이고 학습 기반이어서 좀더 그런 측면에서 좀더 좋은 것 같긴 합니다. 확실히 페어한 컴패리즌 아니긴 해요. 위에 거 같은 경우는 그냥 제너럴하게 다한 거고 밑에 거는 하나의 모션에만 이제 학습이 된 거니까. 근데 밑에 게 조금 모션이 있는 데가 다 전체적으로 블러해지는 경향이 있는 것 같은데 그거는 음. 학습. 하는 것 때문에 좀 그렇게 된 거예요. 원래 가지고 있던 캡터를 좀 잃는 것처럼. 아 이건 사실 저 정확하게는 모르겠어요. 왜냐면은 이제 제가 직접 학습을 했다고 했잖아요. 근데 사실 그 데모 비디오 같은 거 보면 되게 깔끔하게 잘 나오거든요. 그래서 이게 제가 뭐 학습할 때뭔 데이터의 문제인지 아니면은 뭐, 뭐 어떤 디테일인지는 제가 정확하게 그건 잘 뭐, 거기까지는 파악을 못 해놨습니다. 또 궁금해요. 혹시 그런 결과도 보셨어요? 뭐 바이스클 타고 있는 거라는 컴퓨터를 준다든지 네. 백그라운드나 포월그라운드가 변화할 수 있는 컴퓨터를 쓸 때도 잘 어, 그것도 테스트를 안 해봤던 것 같아요. 좀 궁금하긴 한 것. 같아요. 근데 이게 일단은 또 지금 이 연구 자체의 한계점이 텍스트 비디오 쪽이 이게 막 <웃음> 많은 거를 변화하는 걸볼 만큼 길게 생성하지 않아요. 그러니까 끼케야 한 16개 프레임 정도 이렇게 생성하다 보니까 뭐 아마 바뀌긴 할것 같거든요 백그라운드가 그냥 뭐 미세하게 지금 바뀌다가 그냥 1초만에 이 비디오가 끝나거든요 GIF로 딱 1초도 안 되게 16 프레임 정도 만드니까 그래서 그 변화를 느낄 만큼의 어떤 길이를 아직은 만들지 못하는 게좀 한계인 것 같긴 해요 So uh, let's move on to the last topic Animate Diff And this is um, totally different topic from the previous one. So in this work, they want to animate this personalized text to image model. And so they want to make this personalized text to video model, but uh, it's challenging to uh, collect the personalized videos. And also, even though we have those um, videos, uh, this kind of limited data leads to knowledge loss of the source domain. So they propose this, um, plug and play motion modeling module, which can be inserted to, uh, which can be trained explicitly and inserted to any kind of uh, personalized text to image model, as long as they share the same base model. So as you can see, this motion modeling module is trained explicitly and inserted to any kind of um, text, to personalized text to image models. So this one repeats what I said. So instead of training all the uh, text image model, when training, they just add this motion modeling module uh, after this um, layers in the pre-trained um, network. And they only train this uh, motion modeling module with uh, 2D video data set. In this case, they need a bunch of 2D video data set. And after training this uh, general motion module, they can insert this module to any kind of um, personalized text to image models to animate this uh, personalized images. So one uh, approach they uh, propose is this um, motion module here, which is built upon this pre-trained image layer. And it's just simple self-attention where the input is reshaped into this form here, batch times, high times, width times, frame times channel. So as you can remember, this shape is quite similar to this shape 
before we're uh, feeding into this um, 1D convolution here, right? So only the place of the channel and frame is, is different and other things are the same as this shape. So it works like this. So each of this um, feature is um, defined as token and we uh, apply this self attention across this um, frames. So each color is different frame and the self attention is applied across the frames to uh, exchange about the uh, temporal motion dynamics across the frames. So this, with this some um, slight modification, they only train this motion module. And after training, they can insert this motion module to any kind of um, text to personalize text to image models. So here are some results and you can see that um, I think like first row is some personalized model on some uh, anima uh, some animation. And second one might be other personalized model on this kind of like animal cartoon um, data. And after inserting this motion module, they can animate those all kind of um, personalized images here. So uh, in conclusion, uh, uh, today I talked about some recent works where a powerful text image model can be extended to text video model. So the first work was about um, training free method where you don't need any training to extend this uh, powerful text image to text video. And the second work was a uh, few shot based uh, text video model, which we are um, training this uh, powerful text image model to learn about certain motion with just small amount of data. And the last one was to uh, use this um, powerful text image model to learn about this motion modeling. And after training, we, uh, we can like feed this motion models to any kind of um, personalized text image model to animate them. So as Hyun said, like there are like similar techniques. There's like first frame conditioning where this technique could make some consistent motions or consistent objects across the frame. And also since we have this powerful text to image model, we don't need like total fine tuning or total uh, training from scratch. We only need to like add some little amount of layers about like spatial temporal attention or convolution to make them or extend them to text to video models. So I hope that like you can follow, uh, follow up on those um, topics on text to video model and hopefully you can use this kind of techniques or models uh, if it fits with your task. Yeah, that's all I prepared. Thank you for listening. Condition the general or Tanner Snow and Goku, the personalized then image Mandusin and Texman, Loga Jugu, animation Mandusin, the Tega sent Texman about the same filter about it. Okay, complex and motion because in Puna Botan was his. The Hakshi lamp got in gay, Eltan and targeting it, so motion it is a man, Tai Peuja than Goyajugu, Kunama, Jungum, Glory, Hesigan Hedo, Tom Motion Dil Jumdo, detail like a puny Tetaman, Tigum. 첫 번째나 마지막이나 조금 그 컴플렉스한 모션에 대해서는 표현이 잘안 되는 것 같고 이게 다이나믹스가 다 바운드 돼 있는 것 같아서 네 그런 것 같아요. 음. 근데 이제 어, 공개되지 않은 연구들이나 뭐 저희 교수님께서도 뭐 말씀하셨던 것 같긴 한데 뭐 회사에서 내부적으로 뭐 맞아. 데이터 때려박아서 갖고 있는 그런 모델들 그런 것들이 어쨌든 얘네보다 훨씬 좋긴 하겠죠. 근데 이제 저희가 지금 아카데미에서 뭔가 공개된 코드로 할수 있는 선상에서는 지금 이런 모델들이 조금만 모디피케이션 하면은 뭐 비디오 모델이 될 수도 있고 아니면 우리가 원하는 컨디션을 또 바꿔서 넣을 수도 있고 그럴 수 있을 것 같아서 그러니까 이미 텍스트 이미지 모델이 굉장히 잘 학습이 되어 있는 상태여서 그 이미지 디스튜비션은 매우 잘 표현하고 있어서 거기에 추가적인 뭐 미니멀 모디피케이션으로도 우리가 원하는 테스크로 좀 어댑트를 할수 있는 것 같아서 이런 테크닉들을 좀 참고하면 좋을 것 같긴 합니다. 
질문은 아닌데 사실 네. 지금 텍스트 투 이미지를 써서 이제 비디오로 확장을 한 거는 스파셜 도메인을 확장을 한 거고 저는 이제 3D에 관심이 있으니까 네. 3D로 확장을 하는 건 디멘전을 확장을 하는 건데 거기서도 뭔가 어떤 이미지를 넣고 그거를 약간 여러 뷰를 만들 때 걔네들의 컨시스턴시가 되게 떨어지는 문제가 있었는데 그거를 최근에 해결한 방법들이 다 어텐션으로 해결을 네. 했거든요 그래서 저런 컨시스턴시 해결하는 데 어텐션이 좀 중요한 역할을 하는 것 같아서 참고를 하면 좋을 것 같고 음. 말씀하신 것처럼 비슷한 여러 테스크에서 다 비슷한 방법을 쓰는 것 같습니다. 음, 좋은 코멘트 감사합니다. 아, 이미 그 3D 쪽으로는 이런 식으로 확장을 하고 있군요. 그 텍스트 이미지 모델들을. 아, 비슷한 것 같아요. 그러니까 결국 텍스트 이미지, 그러니까 기본적으로 모델들이 다 배치로 봤잖아요. 근데 보니까 이 배치 자체를 뭐 비디오인 경우에는 이 배치에 있는 그 프레임들을 그냥 우리가 만들고자 하는 프레임들로 채워가지고 이제 배치를 구성하든 그렇게 하는 것 같더라고요. 아마 뭐 텍스트 3 d 같은 경우는 이 배치를 구성할 때 디퍼런 뷰가 되게끔 이제 인풋을 아마 넣어줄 것 같은데 그런 식으로 이제 모디피케이션을 해서 쓰는 것 같습니다. 네, 그리고 디퍼런 뷰에서 크로스컨텐션 볼 때도 뭔가 그렇게 하나요? 그때는 어떤 컨디션을 걸어줘요? 그렇게? 앵커, 앵커 뷰를 잡아주는 정확하진 않은데 앵커들이 이미지에 대해서 어떻게 보면 앵커가 이미지 같겠어 앵커들 그런 거 확인하는 거 근데 확실하게 뭐